The first day of the new year and the fire destroyed 25 families homes. Many of them woke up to smoke and flames. Some of them had to hang out their apartment windows to escape. Police said they found five of those bullets. One of them I found lodged in the windowsill myself. Take a look. Taking a tour of the Irish countryside. I'm David McKay working for you in County Wicklow of Ireland. I'll give you a closer look at the agriculture that sustains this area. Skiing down the slopes the day after Christmas and the conditions are absolutely perfect. I'm David McKay at the Guinness Brewery in downtown Dublin. It's one of the most famous drinks worldwide. Today we're going to learn about just how much they export, how it's poured, and how it makes its way to the United States. It's a light powdery mix, a lot of fun for the kids at home going sledding or the skiers. Not too difficult to shovel, but within five minutes of me standing out here, you can see just how much it's accumulated on top of my head. You couldn't make out the difference from the smoke and clouds early this morning. That's how heavy these flames were. From looking at their idols on baseball cards to live on the field, the two boys got an opportunity that many people only dream of. Over a million people for Pope Francis's last mass in Philadelphia. Welcome to 22 News at 5. I'm David McKay. President-elect Donald Trump recently suggested in a tweet that anyone who burns the American flag should have their citizenship revoked. German police are still hunting for the driver of the truck, which slammed into a Berlin Christmas market Monday night. Snow has been falling since early this morning, and it's creating some hazardous road conditions. 22 News is working for you with live team coverage across western Massachusetts. Welcome back. 512, 47 degrees outside. In 25 days, Millions of children will wake up on Christmas morning with gifts from their loved ones. But what about the children whose families can't afford Christmas presents? 20 News reporter Cy Becker explains how thousands of children here in Western Massachusetts are depending on you through the Toys for Tots program. David, you're so right. 20 News is covering breaking news out of Holyoke this morning where firefighters are working to put out a fire right now. This is a live look you can see on your screen. The fire started at 106 to 108 Northeast Street just before 9 o'clock this morning during our newscast. Firefighters have released very little information as they are still working to put out the flames. But this is a massive fire. We haven't seen a fire of this magnitude in this area for months now. You can see the smoke and flames billowing out of the windows of this apartment building on the corner of Northeast Street. There's ambulances, firefighters, police officers. The roadways in the area have been shut down to work on this. You can see some families still looking on as they see the firefighters work on this fire throughout the morning. We've spoken with a few firefighters throughout the morning on the phone. You can hear the tension in their voice as this goes on. And during the break, we've seen some images that are too graphic to show you, but we did see a body covered in a white sheet on a stretcher put into one of those ambulances. Now, as soon as I take off my microphone to walk away from this desk, I am headed to this fire. We will be continuing to bring you updates throughout the morning on air and online at WWLP.com. Tragedy in the city of Holyoke, New Year's Day. It's a sad day for Holyoke right now. A fire started at a five story apartment building on the corner of Northeast and East White Streets just before 9 o'clock Sunday morning. Holyoke Fire Captain Anthony Cerruti said one woman died and two people were still unaccounted for at noontime. I just walked out and when we opened the door, it was black smoke. We walked up for the, because the alarm, and then we just ran out. And when I came out, Everybody was jumping. Uh, I saw like three people jumping. Holyoke firefighters, police officers, and emergency crews were seen running towards the flames within minutes to help. Some were seen giving CPR. Victims were taken to the hospital by ambulance, and tears streamed down the faces of those who were uncertain of what happened to their loved ones. The first day of the new year, and the fire destroyed 25 families' homes. Many of them woke up to smoke and flames. Some of them had to hang out their apartment windows to escape. Those families looked on in disbelief as firefighters continued to battle the flames throughout the day, watching on as their belongings and lives were destroyed. The American Red Cross offered assistance, and the homeless families were taken to the Veterans War Memorial Building on Appleton Street and the Dr. Marcella Kelly School on West Street. Springfield and Chickabee firefighters helped. One firefighter was treated for a hand injury he got while setting up a ladder. I heard people screaming, then I saw a voice smoke, and then that's it. When I opened the door, it was smoke, so I don't know what to do then. So I tried to, to skip it through the window. 
I work for the firemen, firefighting. While firefighters spent hours fighting the flames, there was a shriek <laughs> and a glimmer of hope. A cat could be seen in the window of one of the apartments. I let him know that the cat was right there. So I guess the firefighter seen them and broke the window, got him out. I'm glad he's alive. Perez said he hasn't named the cat, but thinks Garfield or Survivor might be suitable names now. As the state fire marshal's office helps to look into what started the fire, there are still questions as to how the flames got so big so quickly. You know, these buildings are protected by a fire alarm system, so, uh, you know, it's concerning to us, you know, when, when a fire gets this far out of control. It's another question that firefighters hope to have answered starting the new year. In Holyoke, David McKay, 22 News. There's about 1.9 million people in the greater Dublin area. We're right on the edge of Dunleary Port in the Dublin Bay going out into the Irish Sea. It's a major inlet and outlet for ferries going back and forth to Britain and Europe. Today we took a ride south down the coastline to give you a better look outside the city. The green rolling hills of Ireland are a sight to be seen, but there's lakes, waterfalls, castles, history and people. Let's start where our one-day journey began, with a swim on the edge of Dublin Port. So we come every day to get out of bed, get a purpose, and then we come down here, meeting a lot of other old fogies, and we solve all the problems of the world here. And in the meantime, we have a swim, just, just to keep the blood going, to prove, to prove we're alive. It's called the 40-foot bathing place. People come all year round, and I jumped in to prove to the locals I could handle it. Yeah, it's really nice around here and the people are nice as well. It wasn't too cold. After drying off, we went deeper inland and south. It gets rural quickly with windy and bumpy roads. You have to look out for the sheep, which is a major export for the country. This scenery is absolutely spectacular. We're right next to Loch Dan Lake, or Guinness Lake, as many of the locals call it, for a couple of different reasons. We're in the boglands, which give the water that rich and dark looking color. On the top, the white sands make it look like the foam on the top of a pint. And the Guinness family also owns a home right next to it. Continuing our travels south down the Irish coastline to the county of Wicklow is Glendalough. In Gaelic, it means the glen between two lakes. As the story goes, St. Kevin came here to escape a life of wealth and devote his life to nature, God, and prayer. As news of his life got out, more and more people came to visit him. As he died, a missionary was erected in this area, and to this day, people still come to see it. It's just one of many attractions that are on the city's outskirts. You're going to see a lot of green fields and a lot of kind of old architecture and stone walls and beautiful lakes and walks and beautiful woodland walks. Um, waterfalls and lots of optical illusions where you feel like you're going down the road you're going up the road. <laughs> but there is one thing if you're planning a trip. Ireland is mad on St. Patrick's Day. It's a warning. <laughs> Just one day was overwhelming with the amount of people, history, and landscapes that we were able to experience. I'll continue to take you on the adventure over the next couple of days. In Dublin, Ireland, David McKay, 22 News. It was scary because this is where Aubrey sleeps, and that is where she would have been, and she could have been dead, and why. It just, it's something no one wants to live through, no one wants to imagine, and we lived it, and we're just, we're just grateful that she wasn't there. Springfield police were called to the report of two men shooting guns at Myra Lopez's home at 129 Chapin Terrace in the Liberty Heights neighborhood around 3 o'clock Saturday morning. Lopez said she has three children living in her home. Her two toddler granddaughters, Karina and Aubrey, and her nine-year-old daughter, Isabella. I heard a gunshot and I heard a window shatter. So I went to my mom's room and then I looked out the window and there was a fire. When officers got to the home, they found a Jeep Grand Cherokee on fire in the parking lot. Springfield firefighters put the flames out quickly and determined it was arson. But it was the bullets that hit inside the room of Aubrey, the youngest, which gave most concern. Six bullets were fired into the nursery room of the soon to be one year old around three o'clock in the morning, right where she sleeps in this crib. Police said they found five of those bullets. One of them I found lodged in the windowsill myself. Take a look. Aubrey's mother said it was luck she wasn't there. She had been fussy with a cold and was taken to her parents' room to sleep for the night. I'm very fortunate that she's okay. I'm happy she was sleeping with us for the night. I don't think I'm going to ever let her sleep in her crib now. It's kind of traumatizing. We've been up since 3 o'clock this morning. We don't want to sleep. The crime continued. Police saw a car fleeing the area of Lopez's home, leading them on a chase. 
The car sped to the North End Bridge into West Springfield, then back over again. Police said they saw items being thrown from the car into the Connecticut River below, and some were believed to be guns. The chase ended with a crash with a police cruiser on East Columbus Avenue. Two police officers were hurt, but are expected to be okay. One of the suspects was injured and was also taken to the hospital. Lieutenant Richard LaBelle identified the two arrested as 35-year-old Jose Garcia of Chicopee and 28-year-old Henry Quinones of Springfield. There's just got to be sheer evil because no good-hearted person would, would, would ever do this. There's no reason for this. Lopez said she believes the suspects may have been targeting someone who used to live at the home, but police say they are still looking for motives. Garcia and Quinones are being held at the Springfield Police Department, facing numerous charges. In Springfield, David McKay, 22 News. Right about here, I'm thinking, how did I end up in the back seat of this plane? And then right about here, I start to enjoy myself. The Geico Sky Typers are one of the attractions to the Great New England Air Show at Westover Air Reserve Base. I got to put on a flight suit, helmet, and parachute and climb up into the cockpit for a flight. What you're going to see is something you've never seen before. You're going to see something that a lot of people don't get to see, and that is another airplane right up close to you. These SMJ-2 planes were built in 1940 to train World War II pilots, but they've still got some speed. And if you open the hatch, At the same time, these planes fly in tight formation and print words or symbols in the air with smoke, otherwise known as sky typing. We spell out messages that can be 1,500 feet tall, and they can be as long as six to eight miles, depending on how complex the messages are. One aerobatic pilot joined the group as we flew over Springfield. Without a cloud in the sky, I could see the Connecticut River and the sprawling fields of western Massachusetts. And you didn't need a message written across the sky to see the excitement people have for the Great New England Air Show.